Okay, are we, you're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you for joining. If you're in the house, can we hear from you? Thank you. Thank you for joining. This is the second part of the same webinar, okay? We could only allow a particular number of persons for the first one and then this the persons are supposed to join this one all right if you are there can we know that you're there my name is dr chris williams and the webinar is why covid killed covid 19 kills fast and how to avert it okay why covid 19 kills fast and how to avert it thank you i i see somebody galaxy 56 um, I don't, I don't see your name yet. Thank you for joining. My name, right. my name is Ayo Gumeko. Okay. And thank you for everything. We are admiring you. God bless you. Ayo Gumeko. Thank you for joining. All right. Who else is there? We thank God at least that we are hearing from from you. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Emeka Wakamasa. You. You're welcome. Thank you. If you like it, you able to see it better. Beatrice, Ojo, we appreciate you. All right. Ah, Emeka, well yes, done. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, we, uh, sir. Just use the first five minutes to welcome uh, folks. All right. Um, uh, uh, Mrs. Mogmoju. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. How are you doing, man? That's great. So, who, who, who else is there? Who else is there? I'm here, right. Veronica. It's Veronica, you're welcome. Thank you. COVID 19. Why it kills about it. We'll, in this uh, webinar, we're going to be discussing what it is. We're going to be discussing the different uh, manifestations or the diverse stages of it. And then we'll be looking at uh, its pathology, the same thing, so we'll look at its pathology and um, what to do, what to do. COVID-19 is, uh, is, should I say, it's, uh, here to stay. I hope my, my uh, fellow so pastors will not say that I am speaking a, a negative or, or, you know, all those kinds of things. It's here to stay. We will not just wake up one morning and then we can't find COVID-19 at all. It, 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 I, that is not likely to happen. Okay, what will happen is that we will uh, be able to curtail it. We'll be able to manage it and we're going to be discussing how we we'll develop community immunity. There's somebody there. Thank you for joining. There's somebody yeah, there. Thank I do. you for joining. Mr. Okay, I do. For joining. All right. Yeah. 
Uh, Mr. Ido, uh, uh, let's start from the things that we know first and foremost. We know that COVID-19 is a new strain of coronavirus. It's a new strain of coronavirus. You know, when uh, I was coming this morning, I just saw a billboard and uh, that says it's a year of new things. And then I said, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we are really encountering something new this year, okay? Uh, but that, those are not the kind of new things we are praying for. So it's a new strain of coronavirus, and um, it's a viral. From, uh, that's their pieces of their sputum. Or pieces of their of the phlegm from their nose. If you make contact with it and then you put it in any of your orifices, uh, in your face and in your mouth, and um, the person, that's how the disease is transmitted. Uh, it's a very highly highly transmissible disease or uh, infection. And then um, the, the, I was watching the governor, sorry, the commissioner for health, Lagos State, yesterday. And he was giving the update on COVID, and he said the death rate in Lagos is well around about one percent. Okay, um, NCCB, NCDC, uh, in the last 12 hours, uh, they told us that the number of confirmed cases is four cases, and that we have recorded 33, 333 deaths, 3,690 starts. All right, and um. They also told us that we have about 121 new cases that they discovered in Lagos uh, recently. Uh, and you know, all, all those kinds of things. The reason for this seminar is so that we, uh, so that you will be able to understand what's up about COVID actually. Besides all the rumors, all the people here say, people are saying this, professionals are saying, the ones, people are saying all kinds of things. Like somebody jokes, so the a, 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 um, the incubation period is between two to fourteen days, between two to fourteen days, and there can be different stages, okay, of of uh, the COVID infection disease. The first one, it can be, it, it can it can manifest as as asymptomatic. You know, that was the person just gets tested by one one way or the other, and then they find that the person is positive to COVID nineteen, but. Besides that, the person doesn't have any feeling at all that they are unwell. Many people are asymptomatic. And it's, it's important that you and I know this so that we'll be able to know how to really... Um, uh, many people can be asymptomatic. Okay, uh, the other stage is the stage, it can progress. Somebody gets infected today and then it can progress from being asymptomatic to uh, the mild stage. At the mild stage, the person is having generalized body pain, and then there may be headache, just minor things. Okay? And then another, uh, there can be another stage, uh, we call it the moderate stage, where uh, there can be loss of appetite, the person is having weakness and fatigue, the person is having feeling of unwell, and so, so, so that can be the moderate stage. There can be chest pain here and there and all that. Now it can progress to the severe stage where somebody is having is having breathing problems. They are not able to breathe well. Okay. Why it's important to know this first stage? This case is traumatic, mild, moderate, and severe. Because at the towards the end of the of the of the talk, we'll be telling you what to do with what case. Uh, uh, part time. Okay, well, so that's that about uh, uh, that. Okay, what are the signs and symptoms of uh, COVID 19? This is not in order of progression. I just uh, uh, put them uh, together. It can manifest as fat, that's raised temperature. 
It can manifest as myalgia, generalized body pain. It can manifest as uh, shortness of breath. We talked about that. It can manifest as cough, especially non-productive cough. It can manifest as non-productive cough. It can manifest as chest pain. It can manifest as fatigue. The person can present with anosmia. Anosmia is loss of smell, okay? And then it can be also loss of taste. You begin, you, you have, no matter what you put in your mouth, your taste is just bland. And then the person can have pink sputum. When somebody is having pink sputum, that means that there's some bleeding into their lungs and that's, and, uh, or, uh, and that is uh, coming out in form of pink sputum. If COVID affects, uh, progresses to affect the intestinal part, somebody can present with vomiting. They can also present with, uh, with diarrhea. They can present with diarrhea. Now, what's the pathology of COVID? This place is a bit medical. I'll try to not go too far inside it so that I do not lose you or uh, get you frustrated with this presentation. When COVID virus assesses somebody's body, the first reaction you have that the body puts up is a, a, an allergic reaction, just like any other virus. Or, uh, so an allergic reaction. What happens is that th there are different, there are diverse kinds of soldiers in the body that step, try to protect the integrity of the body. Now, the first line of soldiers or first line of attackers are called macrophages. So if a virus is trying to go into the body, the, the macrophage, a macrophage will literally will quickly come and then into the virus. Okay? And then the macrophage will beckon the T cells. Or we call them T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes are the second stage uh, 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 soldiers or defenders of the body. So T lymphocytes will also recruit T alpha cells, and then they will do the battle, win that war, and then they will form a basophil. A basophil is now a soldier that has been trained to handle that virus, and that soldier is there in the body. Sometimes it's in the body for like three months, other times it's there for like two years, so that in case the the that kind of virus comes back, the basophil will be able to attack. Sorry, yeah, the basophil will be able to attack it. That's what that's how immunity is developed. That's why somebody had asked a question: Can somebody be reinfected with COVID? And um, yes and no. Yes, in no, in that no, in that um, the basophils are there. There are if somebody is attacked by COVID and the person survives it. The basophils are there, and sometimes they live between three months to like two years. But now, if that that uh, that if a corona, for instance, COVID nineteen, unless it changes its status, its its uh, its its shape, or its uh, unless it mutates fast, if it doesn't mutate as fast as. Uh, uh, just like any other virus, it's difficult to come down with it again. You know, even when you come down, you come down with just mild attacks, just mild attacks. All right. So uh, that's about the pathology. See going on with the pathology. Now, so what I, what I described earlier is how the body naturally reacts to other viral infections, other infections. Now. For COVID, the reaction is a bit different. And that's what threw the peoples of the world, the medical world, into confusion initially about COVID. When somebody is initially uh, attacked with a virus, there are about, there are hundreds of types of T cells in the body, T lymphocytes, hundreds of types. But it is not all the different hundreds of types that will be recruited to fight a particular virus. So for instance, if a Ebola virus enters somebody's body, it's not all the viruses that will be recruited to fight the, the virus. Only about 25 types from the hundreds of types of, uh, of uh, lymphocytes will be recruited. But for COVID, it is different. They found it to be different. 
there is something called cytokine storm. You can write it down, cytokine, C-Y-T-O-K-I-N-E. They found out that there's, there's an overwhelming recruitment of TFR cells. Literally, all the body defense goes to war on, uh, against this particular thing. And what it leads to is an overwhelming inflammation of the, of the body of the organs of the body and that's one of the things that causes it to be that causes it to be really really bad i'll say it again in a normal infection just about 25 different types of tfr cells will be recruited to fight the battle but for covid we find that hundreds 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 of types of t lymphocytes are being recruited and that leads to overwhelming inflammation reaction. It's called a cytokine storm. Cytokine storm. Uh, 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 okay, so there's overwhelming infl inflammation reaction taking place in the lungs. It takes place in the kidney. It's taking place in the in, in the heart. It's taking place in the liver. That's what they found out um, in the first segment. I said thank God for the for for the Italian uh, doctors when COVID nearly wanted to finish them against regulations they went ahead and did autopsy on on some bodies and what they found is what actually helped us help the whole world to change the battle uh, against covid what did they find they found out that unlike a normal pneumonia pneumonia a normal pneumonia affects only the lungs they found out that COVID affects much more than the lungs. It attacks the kidneys, it attacks the liver, it attacks the spleen, it attacks several other organs with massive overwhelming inflammation. And then not only that, it causes platelet aggregation. Platelets begin to form blood clots. And then there's micro nodular micro bleedings into the, the organs. And this can eventually lead to shock and it can lead to, this, uh, uh, to death. Okay, so uh, I said there's enormous overwhelming inflammation. It leads to overwhelming pneumonia. It leads to overwhelming uh, uh, liver cell inflammation, overwhelming kidney cell inflammation, overwhelming heart cell inflammation. It leads to fibrosis of the lungs. It leads to platelet aggregation, activation of platelet aggregation, such that it begins to happen there begins to be blood clots formed all over in the organs. Okay, that's very important. Okay, so all this leads to destruction of the organ and the tissues. And then, before you know, the shock sets in and there is death. Now, what do we do? Why all this? What should we do? Now, like I said earlier, COVID will not, will not just wake up one day. And then we see that Kobe has, Kobe has disappeared. It will not really happen. What will happen is that the people's, let's use Nigeria, for instance, or our country, or our communities, for instance. What will happen is that the people of the world will develop what is called community immunity or herd immunity to COVID. The best way I can describe herd immunity is what we have the relationship that we Africans have with malaria. What is the relationship we have with malaria? Malaria is in, in our midst. Every day people are falling down with malaria. Even you that you are watching me now, you, you might be battling malaria, but you, you have malaria in your body and you are going your own. Malaria is going his own, is being his own. From time to time, it kills people. That's some kind of head, remote uh, um, explanation of head immunity. So, like, Herd immunity happens when about 50 to 70 percent of the people of a community have developed antibodies to that virus. So before we would have developed herd immunity to corona, which about 50 to 70 percent of our populace have to have developed some immunity, some antibody to, that, to, to, to COVID. In other words, one way or the other, 50 to 70 percent people have been exposed to it. We have been stung by it, and one way or the other, we have overcome it, but the antibody, the basophils I talked about, are still there in the body. Uh, uh, that is when we'll be able to say, uh -huh. COVID, to hell with COVID. Are you still here? Now, for herd immunity to take place, 
it can happen via three routes. The first one is not desirable at all. What is the first one? Leave everybody, open up everywhere, let people go back to their work, open the markets, don't care about uh, 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 wearing face masks, don't care about, uh, about uh, washing hands, let everybody, let the infection just be a free for all. Survival of the fittest kind of thing. What if we are allow it to happen like this? There will be so many casualties around the world before we get to 50 to 70 percent herd immunity. Another way that we could quickly get to 50 to 70 percent herd immunity is by widespread vaccination. Widespread vaccination, and that's why the scientists, the the microbiologists, the the uh, uh, biological engineer, uh, uh, genetic engineers, and biological engineers are working hard. They, they are, but as, as, we, as we speak today, there are no serious, worldly, uh, widely accepted vaccines. Okay, how are vaccines done? What they do is that they will take the virus. Sometimes they will kill it, and then they will put it in the body of people of the person they want to be vaccinated. And then when it gets there, the, ma the, the macrophages will say, hey, a virus has come in, and then they will swallow it. And then all that thing that I talked about will, will take place, and pastophils will be formed towards it. Antibodies will be formed towards it. That's the way. Another way they de develop virus is they will not kill it. That break the neck. It is called life attenuated. Virus. It is okay. Uh, so that's another way. But until the vaccines come out, there's another way that you and I can can do, and that we can take care of ourselves and not remain locked down for good. Now, if you are 65 years of age, they have told us, and they have said it, try and stay at home. What we found out about COVID is that people, it, it affects people who have other diseases like uh, diabetes, hypertension more, and when it affects them, if when it affects them, it is more severe in them, actually. That's what we found out. We also found out that people who are 65 years and above, when it affects them, it's also more severe inside them, okay? So if possible, stay at home. Other things we can do is, uh, so how, I'm talking about how, okay, the third one now is develop uh, prophylaxis. Prophylaxis, real prevention steps. And what are the real prevention steps we can take? What are the real prevention steps we can take? Uh, uh, continue the, the social isolation. Wearing of masks when need be, not wearing masks to sleep. You are supposed to wear masks only when you are in the midst of people that are not family. Okay? Uh, not wearing masks when you are inside your car, all the windows wound up and you are still wearing face masks. Some people attend wearing face masks to do, to run, to jog and all that. That's not good. You have to know that when you wear that, it reduces your intake of oxygen and can create another problem in your body. Okay, staying at home also and all that. So that's uh, one of the first things. Another way to develop uh, uh, that we can go about prophylaxis is taking supplements into our body that will help us increase our immunity. What are those supplements? Ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Vitamin C is the mother of all anti antioxidants very powerful all infections in fact all diseases most chronic diseases the one of the pathway through which they progress in the body is through oxidation the redox reaction the redox reaction so if you are high in uh, if you take food or supplements that are high in antioxidants the redox reaction will not be able to be established in your body and it helps immunity. Vitamin C, taking about three grams of it daily. I and, and my family will take more than three. 
sometimes we take up to five, six, seven grams daily. I, I use the, the vitamin C, the powder type of vitamin C. All right, so another a, a supplement that we need to be on to show up our immunity is zinc. Zinc, zinc sulfate, if, if you can lay your hands on it. And these are over-the-counter supplements. Nobody will hold you to buy them to use them. Okay, but it's important that you also um, um, consult with your doctor before you do that. This is not a prescription. This program is not meant for prescription. We are just informing you okay. so that you can know what is up. All right, so zinc, you can yeah, use it. Um, uh, 100 milligrams of vitamin C daily can, 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 uh, of uh, zinc uh, can be helpful, okay? But zinc is charged. Zinc is charged. In other words, it's difficult for zinc to penetrate into your cell. What zinc does to corona uh, is it reduces virus replication. Zinc generally, in, world, in the world, in places where they have... The room, I gave you, how much is um, a year A yearly attack of, 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 of influenza. Uh, 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 they, they know that they know about the use of zinc. When you take zinc, it, it please, if you have any question, you have to wait. Let me finish this, and then we'll, we'll, we'll field your question. Just try to try to type it in. We'll field your question so that uh, you don't pop into my into my my trail. All right. So um, zinc reduces replication of the virus. So being on zinc about 100 milligrams daily, and then maybe like 50 milligrams daily for your children can help. All right. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so I was saying that zinc is charged. It's difficult for it to enter inside the cell. And that's why in, in the places where they have found that hydroxychloroquine uh, chloroquine uh, is able to also help uh, patients recover, uh, that's why they, they combine, uh, 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 that's the use of hydroxychloroquine actually. Hydroxychloroquine is a zinc ionophone. It helps to escort zinc across this blood cell barrier into the cell. Another supplement that is, uh, now, you, are, you can't find that dose of cell. You cannot find it. Okay? You cannot find it. Okay? So, what, but what ionophone can you use? You can use quercetin. Quercetin. Q-U-E Q-U-E-R C-E-T-I-N Q-U-E-R C E T I N. Quercetin is also a supplement that you can buy and then you can uh, be on. Just a capsule of quercetin on a daily basis uh, can can help you. It can help you. Okay. In a moment of time, I will talk about the foods that I can find all the supplements in. What other supplements? Garlic supplements, ginger supplements, uh, maybe capsules or the tablets of uh, cinnamon if you can lay your hands on them. Turmeric also. And you can also take these as food. These ones, I, these last ones I mentioned: garlic, ginger, turmeric. Now, ginger, what? Ginger contains zinc. Okay, now, uh, uh, and that's why you have heard testimonies of people who were positive with it. I watched one, a man. His mom was uh, tested positive with corona, and she, that was in UK. And they they use ginger, garlic, and lemon. And in a matter of days, uh, the woman recovered, they eventually tested, and she was negative. Now, that ginger there, that ginger there, uh, it, what is powerful about ginger is two. Number one, ginger is a powerful anti-inflammatory, and it's also a powerful, okay, what is powerful about ginger is three, actually. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory, it's a powerful uh, blood thinner, and it's also, it, it contains zinc, ginger. Okay, so I was talking about garlic, turmeric, cinnamon. Garlic, turmeric, cinnamon, and ginger. They are very powerful anti-inflammatories and powerful blood thinners. They thin the blood just like aspirin. You remember, when somebody has hypertension and they're a bit elderly, they will place them on aspirin. The reason is so that, because hypertension can cause blood clotting. And if it causes blood clotting in the brain, it can lead to stroke. It can cause blood clotting in the heart and it can lead to cardiac arrest. That's why they place them on aspirin. Aspirin is a blood thinner. But you don't have to go to for aspirin. Ginger, garlic, turmeric, and cinnamon can do just good. 
All right. Now, some other supplements you need to another supplement you need to be on before I talk about the foods where you can get them is glutathione. 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 But uh, uh, unless you get glutathione in a way in a in a form in which it can be absorbed into the body, taking ordinary glutathione by mouth will not benefit you. I said vitamin C is the mother of antioxidants. Glutathione is the father of antioxidants. Okay, very powerful, glutathione. Now, but if you take it solely by itself, it will not benefit because it will not be absorbed into the body. It has to be taken in as its precursors, as its raw materials. There are two things, supplements, that help to build glutathione in the body. The first one is alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid. Okay, it's a precursor of glutathione, and then also N acetyl cysteine. N acetyl cysteine. N acetyl cysteine. It's uh, it's not only a precursor of glutathione. It also helps the glutathione that's already in the body to be. It helps to. Is it turning around now? It helps to replenish glutathione. It helps to roll it, roll it. When glutathione is used and is break, broken down, it helps it to form back. Besides uh, replenishing glutathione, N acetine, N acetyl cysteine, NAC for short, also helps to reduce that fibrosis reaction. I said there will be a, a, a COVID causes a massive fibro, fibrocystic reaction of the lungs. COVID, uh, NAC stands against that. COVID causes platelet aggregation. NAC reduces that. COVID causes, causes clotting inside the lungs and the kidneys and all that. NAC reduces that. So NAC is very important. And acetyl cysteine. Another uh, supplement comes to my mind, fish oil. Fish oil, fish oil, omega-3. Omega-3 is very powerful as an anti-inflammatory. Now, uh, you, uh, also, anything you do to alkaline your body or alkalize your body helps you to fare better if you ever get exposed to coronavirus, all right? Anything you do to alkalize your body. So staying away from acidic foods and then also um, uh, maybe taking waters that are alkaline. There are brands that are alkaline and there are alkaline drops that you can also get. Now, foods before I forget. Foods before I forget. What are the foods? For instance, foods that contain zinc. Ginger. I talked about it. legumes, beans. Cocoa powder. Sesame seeds. Pumpkin seeds. Nuts like cashew, granuts contain zinc. Yogurt contains zinc. All grains contain zinc. Cereals like oats contain zinc. And vegetables like broccoli contain zinc. Foods that contain quercetin. Foods that contain quercetin. Onions. And all the foods in the family of onions, like, like, uh, like garlic. Okay? Citrus fruits, green leafy vegetables, garlic, ginger, and berries contain quercetin. And I must say this, if you have issues with, uh, with asthma or any allergic reaction, quercetin is very, very, it's, a very, it's very good for anti-allergy. I first knew about quercetin as a young doctor. Somebody used to have asthma and then a natural health practitioner prescribed um, um, quercetin. Now, the person started taking quercetin while taking some other things that they had given him in the hospital, and he was able to achieve better control of his attacks. Anything allergy, quercetin, so the rest is very good, very good. And, and, and it's an over-the-counter supplement, you can get it, all right? Now, what are the things that contain, what are the foods that will give you glutathione or increase glutathione levels in your body? Broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Avocado, spinach, okra, garlic, onion, leeks, tomato. Tomato contains alpha lipoic acid. And we remember we said 
alpha like folic acid is a precursor of glutathione. All right, so those are the foods. Now, what happens if you catch the, vi the, vi the virus and then you, you do a test either willingly or you develop some symptoms and you decided to go and do a test? What should happen if you find that you have developed the virus or you, you are having signs and symptoms, like I suggested, that look like the virus? What should you do? Try and call the authorities. It's so very important. You call the authorities if you catch it and you know from all the things I said, this is Corona. Try and call the authorities. It's so important. Corona, COVID-19 pandemic is a public uh, health crisis. You need to call them so that they can, uh, so that you can be included in the number. The numbers help them to make strategies for our, our nation is fighting this. All right, very important, very important. I know there are uh, test kits everywhere, some rapid rapid diagnostic tests everywhere, RUDT tests. Uh, 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 some use the blood, others put uh, uh, cutting wounds inside people's, inside the nose or inside the throat and all that. Now, there is none of those tests that have been proven to be accurate. Many of them are, can, will either give a false positive result or a false negative result. And it's a big deal if a test cannot be accurate. Uh, this is what I mean. If, for instance, you test and it gives you a false, false positive result, false positive, false, false positive means you don't have it, but the test misbehaves and then decided that you have it. Now, what will happen is that you don't have it, but the test says you have it. So they take you, they put you in isolation center in the middle of the people who have it, and then they will baptize the person with it. Or it may give a false negative, false negative. Negative means the person has it, but you, you develop fever, you develop kata, and then you go and do the test, and then it says you don't have it, and yet it is COVID. The person goes home and then the person is just distributing it freely to his family. So it's important you call the government officials. Uh, you, you have, all of us have NCDC lines. Call them, let them do their own test. They have their own test. It, their test is called PCR molecular test. It, it is much more accurate. It's much more accurate. So you call the authorities and there's no need to feel hospitalization. Some people have called me and I said, call them. They, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm feeling ostracized. There's no need. Anybody in this generation now who hears that his neighbor developed the corona and you are laughing at the person, you don't even know what is up. You don't know what we are saying. You don't know what we are saying at all. Uh, it's, not a, it's not an infection like HIV that is mostly gotten from maybe sexually transmitted Okay, so no need to, to be afraid of ostracization. It's important that you are properly diagnosed so that you can be adequately treated. Where we are right now, nobody actually needs to die from coronavirus. Many of the persons that die, they reported late, or maybe their immune had been previously bastardized by pre existing diseases, or maybe old age. Okay, if you report early, you can't die. You can't die. You can't die. You cannot die. Okay, so no need to fear ostracization. All right. In, 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 okay, uh, so um, what are the things that they use at all those places? So this is not for you. It's not for you to go and buy it and start using. The proper thing to do is to call. But there's an idea. People have gone and come. One ex-wife minister who is a medical doctor went and he was treated. And when he came, he told us, you can, you can, you, you can Google it. He told us how that they use hydroxy chloroquine, they use uh, azithromycin, they use uh, zinc and all that. Okay, so you, 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 can, you, you can be well treated. That's what I'm saying. I had the commissioner for, for health, Lagos State, yesterday saying that they have already started clinical trials on hydrozine chloroquine, okay? 
uh, so and all that. Now, I have said so much, and um, I maybe at this juncture I need to begin to uh, uh, field uh, questions. I'm just trying to look at my notes if there's something I've not said. I've, the, my particular part I really want you to get is the prophylaxis, the things you need to do in order to increase your immunity. The use of uh, ascorbic acid, zinc, quercetin, garlic, turmeric, cinnamon, okay? Uh, uh, use zinc sulfate, I, I've mentioned it. Use of N-acetyl cysteine and then alpha lipoic acid and then alkal alkaline dieting or alkaline eating, drinking of alkaline water, all this help you. This is not, I'm not, it's not a prescription. Don't go ahead and take this and then you say, hey, if you have COVID, come, let me kiss you. Or let, don't do that, don't do that. Uh, that's still maintain all the, all the things where church is about to open. I'm a pastor and I am on the forefront of making sure that all the things that government say we should provide will be provided. We'll buy more than one uh, 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 automatic pedal, uh, uh, feet pedal machines that dispense uh, hand sanitizers and all that. Still do your part, but also do this part so that in case you come by the infection anyhow, you, it will not take you down, or even if it takes you down uh, just a few days, your body will be able to combat it. Thank you so very much. All right, so let me try and answer some questions. Um, um, my questions disappeared. All right. Okay. Okay, so, yes. So you want to be giving... To now, can someone with diabetes take zinc? Yes, zinc is actually one of the things that um, is used to treat uh, diabetes naturally, zinc. Zinc, yes. Next, uh, next question. Um, garlic, ginger, cinnamon, turmeric supplements. Okay, yes, that's our comment. Just somebody helping us to alight it. Please, I can't hear his voice at all. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it was sorted. Uh, by the way, this will be put on our YouTube uh, channel and then you can view it. You can send the link to several other persons, okay? Um, send in your questions. I'm not seeing any questions here. I'm not seeing any questions here uh, or much questions here. Send your questions in if you have any. One of my lecturers will say, if there's no question, it either means I'm a very terrible lecturer or this is a very extremely intelligent class. So either of the two, either of the two. Um, is it true that someone that had COVID-19 and treated after seven days of treatment can't be contagious again? What they do at the places where they treat is that they they will make sure it's negative before they do the That's what they do. Whether the person can be contagious again or not after seven days, it depends on how the person's body immunity has been able to work with the treatment to overcome it. Okay? So, so can a pregnant person take all, all these medicines? Can a pregnant person take all these medicines? Particularly, um, um, you can take N-acetyl cysteine. I usually don't actually like asking, uh, 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 answering the question whether somebody who is pregnant or not can take it. I don't, I don't like answering it. This is the reason. This is the reason. People are funny. Anything that happens to the pregnancy now, they will say, uh, and all that. So usually when people send me questions about pregnancy, I just ignore it. So I'm ignoring this one. The one I said, now I take it. <laughs> but really, cross-check with your doctor. Cross-check with your doctor. All right, thank you so very much. Now, um, 
where can we get the powdered vitamin C? You can get it in supermarkets. And if you find it difficult to get it, okay, mommy, it's asking, where can we get the powdered vitamin C? You can get it in the market, or if you find it difficult, I know how to send your own to you. All right? Um, please indicate your YouTube, YouTube channel or, or handle. It's been sent. Okay, so it's been sent to you. It's been sent to you. And then if a person that reacts badly to chloroquine catches COVID-19, how does he get treated? They would tell you how you are getting, you get treated, but it's not difficult. It's not difficult at all. It's not, if somebody wants to treat malaria and, and, they, and it's only chloroquine that's available to treat them, all they need to do is take um, pyritine or fenugan like 30 minutes or, or one hour before, and then uh, they, 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 they will take the a chloroquine and then they can repeat it after one hour. Usually, it, that will take care of it. All right? Um, please, what is the best way of having the real nutritional value of ginger? Is it through cooking it or eating it raw? The best way is you slice the ginger and dry it. After drying it, you blend it dry. It becomes a powder. And then you now take it from uh, take like half teaspoon and then you put it in a cup of in a uh, in in a cup of boiled water and then you allow it to sit for like 20 minutes so the best way is by drawing it as tea that's the best way when you eat it as food or you eat it raw you do not get all it has to give you okay so that's our instagram uh, uh handle there i saw that okay Somebody said vitamin C gives pain, uh, reactions like heartburn, especially when I lick it. What can I do? What can I do? If vitamin C gives you heartburn, um, what I, I ask people to, to do sometimes is take it in between meals that you are eating, and then you have eaten like 10 minutes. You take the vitamin C, drink it, and then you continue to eat, all right? But that is not a prescription. I think you should also ask your doctor that question. Or you stay away from it, and then you can use some other uh, antioxidants. There's vitamin A, vitamin E, antioxidant, vitamin E is an antioxidant. Selenium is an antioxidant, and we talked about n acetyl or alpha lipoic acid. Can an outstanding these things? Besides the vitamin C, we can take the rest. Besides the vitamin C, besides the ginger, you can take the, the rest. Okay? Okay. Uh, a friend of mine in the house there, Morgan, thank you. Can hypertension patients be at risk with COVID? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In fact, the risk is higher. The risk is, that is, the risk is in when they have it, the reaction is more or the progression of the disease is faster and it's more de debilitating okay that's why uh, it's important if you have an underlying disease like uh, hypertension like diabetes it's important you are on these supplements so that if in case you 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 come by this disease one way or the other your body is fortified to fight the battle that does not preclude the idea that you need to call the ncdc and then they will um, help you out. It's so very important. There's nothing to hide about COVID. There's nothing to hide about COVID. Okay. Um, um, I think I cannot see any other new question. I cannot see any other new question. All right. Um, my Instagram is at doc at Chris Edstone at Chris Edstone. Instagram. You can uh, follow us there. All right. So now I want all of us to yes, turn on to your, your video so that uh, we can take uh, a snapshot. We can take a good photograph of this seminar. You know, when they do seminar, at the end of the seminar, seminar, all of them will stand and then they will take a good photograph so we can remember. So at this point in time, turn on your video and then let's take a good photograph. Any other question? We still have some little time to answer this question. Thank you so much for, come, for joining in today. You have made my day. Okay. I'm taking okay, I'm getting it. So like my you talk about blending veggies. Is is this all veggies? Okay, this person has been following me. 
because I didn't talk about blending veggies yet. Blending veggies, cucumber, cabbage, carrot, beef, and all that is one of one of the greatest things I've found to be the thing that produces results in uh, the kind of results that we get working with people. This is what it, this is how it, it, it works. If you take it a bowl of salad, if that if you are very patient in chewing it and you chew it well, at the end of the day you will derive just about twenty five percent of the nutrition uh, uh, trapped in those vegetables. But if you take the same vegetables, bowl of vegetables, and you pour it into a blender and blend it and then you drink it, you will draw 75% of its nutrients. Now, if you take the same bowl of vegetable and you pour it into a juicing machine and juice it, you can draw up to 90% of the nutrients of that, veg of, that, of that vegetable. That's why I talk a lot about drinking vegetables and all manners of testimonies. Only, only two days ago, somebody was sharing with me how that he had had me about two years earlier, uh, but he didn't take me seriously. So he developed, he, he had diabetes. So at some point, he developed what looked like a gangrene in one of his feet. According to him, one senior retired uh, uh, officer, he said, if I had put a pin under that my feet, I first would have come out, I'm too sure. My leg was literally rotting. He said, I said, what will I do? Then I remembered, you said, we should drink vegetables. He said, he just decided he's not going to eat any cooked food for till this leg goes. So he began to drink vegetables morning, afternoon, and night, blend vegetables and drink it. And then he said, by the 18th day, that leg had dried up. He said, there's not even a scar, not even any scar remains. I just heard that, that testimony, I think on Tuesday. I never, I, I never heard that. Okay, so blending of vegetables is powerful. Please, let's turn on our video so we can take a virtual photograph. Please. What kind of fruits are vegetable? at this time. I mentioned a whole lot of things that we can take, but more vegetables, broccoli, cabbage, uh, spinach, lettuce, leeks, onions, ginger, garlic, uh, uh, fruit, and then berries. Okay, berries are fruits. Berries, cranberries, blueberries, berries are very good. Berries, berries are very good. Berries, okay? Um, oh, you're asking questions, In the citrus family, lemon, Orange, they are also very good. Apple is also good. What kind of vegetables can we drink? Um, broccoli, cabbage, spinach, lettuce, uh, cucumber, carrot, avocado, all that. What's your Twitter handle? Okay, I think um, it's there. Okay, okay, it's there. Okay, um, at Chris Eston also, don't mind me. Uh, um, um, you, uh, I need to form up higher when it comes to social media. All right? Um, I think that is all. Thank you so much for being with us. This uh, session will be posted on the YouTube. Uh, we Thank you, Dr. The, Chris. The, the handle of the YouTube or the channel of the YouTube will be sent to your email and then you can help us send it. Please, I beg you, when you get that uh, link, send it to at least 10 persons, 10 persons, okay? And then also subscribe, okay? Because I intend to be doing things like this, at least maybe, uh, well, I've not decided the frequency, but um, it, will, it will come on. Not only on, on, not only on COVID, we'll talk about several things, we'll talk about cancer, we'll talk about several things. Thank you for joining the Well Again, uh, webinar today. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.